a very good evening to everyone welcome in today's class and as we say in the beginning let's crack neat pg together so today we are going to talk about necrosis the topic of today is necrosis but before beginning with today's topic let us have a small introduction about an academy hi crystal fernandez welcome to the class so an academy is one of the india's largest platform for the preparation of neat pg examination one of the best educators teach at an academy so by the help of an academy you can have the privilege of getting mentored by the best faculty members all over india so these are the pictures of some of the best faculties at an academy and there are special classes at an academy and um, what is so special about these special classes is you can actually chat directly with your educator they'll be very much willing to solve your questions doubts and you can get your queries cleared out very easily with the help of these special classes then there are test series and as i always say it is very much important to evaluate yourself that how much you have learned so far evaluation is very much necessary that whether you have gained the concept or you haven't gained the concept so test series is very very important thing so you can just go to the test series you can attempt the questions and if you were not you are not satisfied with what you have done you can just go back and attempt the test series again so these test series serve as very important tool in evaluating yourself and that is also possible with an academy then this is one of the easiest way in today's time for the preparation of neat pg examination and Uh, always it is very much best way for the preparation because already these uh, final year students and uh, the students who have actually taken a drop for pg for them it is not that easy to actually go to the offline classes so the flexibility in schedule wherever you are you can just start your preparation it is very much flexible then the language can be of your choice you can even uh, get mentored in the regional languages there are various faculties who teach in the regional languages so language can be of your choice then unlimited practice as i said that once you have done the quiz you can go back and you can do the quiz as many number of times as you want to so unlimited practice is also possible with the help of these features at an academy then if the session is recorded once you can any time go back and rewatch it if you are missing some of the concept and you have heard those about those concept in the class you can any time go back and revise the thing so it is one of the easiest way in today's time for the preparation then another feature is that you can chat with your educator so if you can chat with your educator it is almost classroom classroom like feeling you won't feel anything different than a normal classroom then your faculty member will be asking you question through interactive polls so in those interactive polls there will be n number of options and you will have to select one then each and every option will be easily um, explained by the faculty member they'll explain you why option number this is the right answer and why not the other options so interactive polls is very much um, interactive way in which you can actually understand the thing then learn anytime anywhere as we are saying as it is the online portal so you can learn anytime anywhere with the help of it right then there is a feature uh, that is the plus subscription and what is so special about this plus subscription is that you can get all the 19 subjects all together at this plus subscription and uh, there are upcoming short term courses crash courses according to the examination which are uh, timely being conducted by the faculty members so you can always get that motivation that yes this crash course is going on and in these many hours i will be completing my whole syllabus so that is very much interesting with plus subscription and plus subscription has helped lot many students to qualify the examination then this plus subscription has to be taken by paying a little amount which is quite pocket friendly but what is my personal suggestion is that go for a yearly or a two yearly subscription so that you can make the most out of it because there are immense number of lectures by so many faculty members if you want 
to go through all of them at least you will be uh, taking around a year or two year for completion right so just go for this plus subscription and qualify the examination then another thing is and uh, in this plus subscription you can get an additional 10% discount if you are using my referral code so it is already pocket friendly but still you can take you can get an additional 10% discount if you are using my referral code that is fb01 so by using my referral code you will be getting an additional 10% discount which will be very much helpful for you so just go for this plus subscription and don't forget to use my referral code right so let us begin with today's class that is necrosis necrosis so what is this necrosis what is it actually there are two types of cell death we have heard about the names very well that is necrosis and apoptosis apoptosis so what is this necrosis and apoptosis we'll just understand the difference between necrosis and apoptosis and we'll be taking the class all through on necrosis right so what is this necrosis actually so whenever a cell it undergoes irreversible cell injury whenever there is irreversible irreversible cell injury it will be coming under necrosis right irreversible cell injury is the most appropriate thing which defines necrosis and when we are saying apoptosis hi kaf khan welcome to the class then what is this apoptosis it is programmed cell death programmed like the genetic material will decide when the cell needs to be converted into a non working cell so apoptosis is programmed cell death and this is a cell injury most importantly that cell itself is not thinking that yes i need to die if suddenly there is an accident there is a cell injury it will enter into necrotic pathway and what is this apoptosis it is the program cell death cell is already thinking about it and it is working towards it it's a kind of suicide and necrosis is a kind of accident so necrosis is accidental death and apoptosis is predecided it is a suicide right now for necrosis what all things should be important what all things should be considered in mind the cells which are actually undergoing this necrosis should be a part of the body they cannot be like uh, away from the body or they are just cut out from the body they should be the part of the body they should be the part of the living body should be part of living body right so this necrosis will occur if it is in the alive state and suddenly it is encountering some unfavorable condition it will enter into necrosis so what else it can be called as it can be called as sudden death which we are saying can be called as sudden death and it can also be called as accidental death accidental death these are the two things which is associated with necrosis right it is the sudden death accidental death and programmed cell death is your suicide it is not sudden cell is already thinking about it so one more difference which we need to see between necrosis and apoptosis necrosis and apoptosis there are many differences actually but some of them we will be discussing over here and apoptosis i have done already a different lecture on apoptosis in detail how the mitochondria is taking part in everything so you can just go and check out that video on apoptosis so apoptosis is a physiological and pathological condition physiological and pathological and when we are talking about necrosis what all things can come under necrosis what all things can come under it it is lethal injury it is lethal injury then it is pathological then then it can be because of the toxins it can be because of the radiations 
it can it is actually unwanted cell is not actually wanting to get rid of those particular cells so it is unwanted injury cell is not willing that i want to get rid of these particular cells but it is an unwanted injury right and whenever there will be necrosis there will be the leakage of these cells interior component into the environment so if there is a leakage of everything what is there in the cell there will be leakage in the environment it will harm the body and it will damage the neighboring cells it will damage the neighboring cells and whenever there will be apoptosis there will be no damage to the neighboring cells no damage to neighboring cells it will be in a very systematic manner there will be no oozing out there will be blebs formation out of the whole cell and these blebs will be actually taking care of whole process so apoptosis is a very systematic process because cell has already thought about it it is like a predecided thing two sides so it will plan everything accordingly and then there will be no disturbance in the outer environment but necrosis is accident so it will definitely create lots of turbulence in the environment it will damage the neighboring cells so these are the major differences between necrosis and apoptosis which i think now you people have understood well so let us move with necrosis that what is this necrosis how it occurs what all are the factors and what all things actually come under necrosis right so necrosis if you are saying necrosis necrosis uh, let me take pen right so necrosis how will this necrosis occur how will it occur there will be a series of morphological changes in the lethally injured cells there will be series of morphological morphological changes in lethally injured cells right and which will be irreversibly damaged right in irreversibly injured irreversibly injured necrosis there it is like a very uh, it is not a systematic thing but definitely there will be series of changes going on in the cells morphology so what you need to remember when we are talking about the definition of necrosis it is a series of morphological changes in lethally injured cells each and every word counts over here because each and every word is important then irreversibly injured this injury is irreversible so that is your necrosis the series of morphological changes in lethally injured cells which are irreversibly injured right so let us take a pen so why these changes is actually occurring why all these things are occurring why is it happening because there will be low level of atp atp will go down there will be very less atp because now it has stopped doing all the metabolic activities atp level will go down and glucose will convert into glucose will convert into lots of lactic acid it is not entering into the actual atp conversion pathway it will be making lactic acid there will be lots of lactic acid and this lactic acid will be again damaging the cell damaging the cells so this is necrosis there will be low atp concentration then glucose will be converting into the lactic acid so what all things what else will be happening is there any other thing also which will be happening in necrosis so yes there will be lot many things so let us start let us pick from lethal injury if a cell has come across lethal injury then what will be the next thing if there is a lethal injury and we are saying that there will be production of lots of lactic acid so why lactic acid what will it do it will change the intracellular active proteins into inactive proteins they will be denatured in simple terms so let us write intracellular intra cellular 
proteins are denatured right one of the condition which we are seeing in necrosis the first thing that is proteins are denaturing we are saying that it is a series of morphological changes the so first thing that is the proteins are denatured so if proteins are getting denatured then there will be change in the cellular structure and cellular function there will be change in cellular structure and function understanding those who are attending the class they can write in the chat box if they are understanding the concept they are getting the thing and if there is a change in cellular structure and function the structure of cell will be disrupted and the functional proteins will stop doing their things right okay so structure of the cell will be disrupted structure of cell is disrupted and functional proteins are converted into functional proteins lose their functionality so when this is happening so what all functional proteins are actually losing their functionality okay yes i have got just one response sam is saying yes ma'am okay so structure of cell is disrupted functional proteins are losing their functionality so what all functional proteins are losing their activity so enzymes enzymes they will stop their doing their activities pumps will stop doing their activities then lots of regulatory proteins will stop doing their activity they will be disrupted so this all things are happening so when all these things are happening it is actually changing the morphological morpho logical changes it is leading the morphological changes so are you getting one more response kunal gupta is saying yes ma'am okay so the main thing enzymes pumps regulatory proteins they are losing their activity proteins are denatured never forget that proteins are denatured over here this is not happening in apoptosis apoptosis is altogether a different thing in necrosis proteins are getting denatured and they are losing their functionality we will see two uh, two three more things about necrosis so first of the thing that you should remember is the proteins are denatured proteins are now not functional in their activity right so there will be morphological changes right let us move then if there are morphological changes what else will occur then what else will happen there will be enzymatic digestion of severely injured cells enzymatic digestion so it is enzymatic digestion enzymatic digestion of severely injured cells because we are saying the cells they will be undergoing the morphological changes so enzymatic digestion of severely injured cells now which kind of enzymes will actually take part in the digestion of these severely injured cells so we know that the enzymes which are actually the enzymes which take part in degrading the self of the cell they are the lysosomal enzymes so lysosomal enzymes lyso normal enzymes will come out will come out of the lysosomes will come out and proteolysis of the cellular component will occur and proteolysis of cellular component will occur right so the digestion of the cellular component with the help of lysozymes is actually called as autolysis it is your autolysis autolysis is occurring in necrosis then what else is happening is there any other thing also happening when we are saying that it is leaking out in the environment it will be damaging the environment so if all of the things of the cells are coming out then it will also undergo the digestion with the help of macrophages and neutrophils so when these two things are taking part in digesting digesting and eating of the necrotic cell it comes under 
heterolysis. Heterolysis. When we are talking about apoptosis, it is a completely heterolysis because the blebs will come out and then they will be engulfed and there will be no autolysis in apoptosis. Apoptosis is completely related with heterolysis. So, in heterolysis, the neutrophils and macrophages will eat up the neighboring cells and they will be damaging the outer environment. So, two things which is happening in Necrosis is your autolysis as well as heterolysis, right? So, let us take the things further. One of the things that we have seen is enzymatic digestion, which we have seen over here. Yes, lionfish is also replying. Good to see you in the class. Then, first thing is enzymatic digestion. The second thing is plasma membrane of the cell is disrupted. Plasma membrane of cell is disrupted. There will be so many holes in the plasma membrane. So, if the, there are holes in the plasma membrane, the cell content will actually ooze out or it will come out. So, plasma membrane of cell is disrupted. So, intracellular component come out. Intracellular. Intracellular. Components. Comes out. Right. And if they come out, then obviously cell is unable to maintain its integrity. Cell unable to maintain integrity. It will lose integrity. Now it will collapse. It, ha it has collapsed. So when the cell has collapsed and everything is lying in the environment, the things have come out. So, what will happen if everything has come out in the environment? It will definitely elicit the inflammatory reaction in that particular area. So, the another thing that is associated with the disruption of plasma membrane is inflammation reaction. Elicit, elicit inflammation. Will elicit inflammation in that particular area. And... In, in that area also let's write in that area so if there is inflammation in that particular area what all things will occur the blood vessels will dilate blood vessels dilate and if these blood vessels they are dilating what will happen the leukocytes will come leukocytes comes and what these leukocytes will do? They will eat up the necrotic substance. So blood vessels are dilating, nucleoside, leukocytes are coming and they are eating up the necrotic cells. Eating up necrotic cells. Right. So there will be eating up, the, up of the necrotic cells and what else will happen? So, first of all, before uh, moving further, that what will happen? Let us just have a look over here. The second thing that we are saying in necrosis is disruption of plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is disrupted. Plasma membrane of cell is disrupted. And because of this disruption, there will be inflammation reaction in that particular area. And the things which are related with inflammation is dilation of the blood vessels. Approach of leukocytes and they will eat up the necrotic cells. And when they will eat up the necrotic cells, is there anything else will also happen? Yes. So, some of the factors will also be released. Factors will be released in that area. Some factors will be released. And what these factors will do? These factors will actually lead into formation of fibrin in that area. That will be the formation of fibers. And there will be loss of the integrity of plasma membrane and membrane disruptures. And this will be the elicit of elicit inflammation. So, this is the second thing that is associated with necrosis. Now, before moving further in detail about the types of necrosis, let us have uh, one more concept about necrosis and apoptosis. Whenever we are talking about necrosis, what do you people think? That how many cells will undergo necrosis altogether? 
how many cells will, cells will be participating in necrosis? One cell, two cells, how many cells? And when we are talking about apoptosis, how many cells are actually take, taking part in apoptosis? Two things, we are just doing the comparative analysis whole way. So necrosis and apoptosis. How many cells will take part in necrosis at a particular point of time? This is my question. So a large group of cells will actually participate in necrosis. Large group of cells. There will be nothing like that. Yes, one cell is undergoing necrosis. No. In apoptosis, as minimum as one to two cells can undergo apoptosis. So apoptosis occurs in less number of cells as compared to necrosis. Right? And in apoptosis, there is no inflammation. So remember that large group of cells are undergoing necrosis and apoptosis, it will occur in less number of cells. Right? So two things that we have seen that is associated with necrosis is enzymatic denaturation, then disruption of the plasma membrane. Right? I hope you have understood till here. Well, I need some of the responses in the chat box so that I can feel yes, uh, I have conveyed the message. Right? Let's move further. Just write in the comment box. So, now coming about the another phase of the class of today in necrosis that is, yes, Kunal Gupta is replying. Okay. So, necrosis, there will be patterns in necrosis also. So, the two major patterns, two major patterns in necrosis, right? The two major patterns in necrosis, coagulative necrosis and liquefactive necrosis. Coagulative. Coagulative necrosis and liquefactive necrosis the two patterns in necrosis right so we will be discussing about these two major patterns and we will be talking about some specific and special type of necrosis and we will be categorizing them into liquefactive necrosis and coagulative necrosis yes sam has also replied lionfish and kunal all have, all have replied replied okay fine let us move so, coagulative necrosis and liquefactive necrosis. So, coagulative is the most common one. This is the most common kind of necrosis. We will be talking about coagulative and uh, liquefactive in very detail. You will be understanding the things. And this is liquefactive is quite rare. But yes, it is also seen. It is like rare, but coagulative is the most common one. Right? So, what happens in coagulative and what happens in liquefactive? The term itself, they are explanation, uh, explanatory. You can see coagulative, there is some coagulation word and there is some uh, thick structure which is being formed in your mind when you are just looking at the term coagulative. And when you are looking at the term liquefactive, you, the, what you can imagine is some liquidy material. So the terms itself, they are self-explanatory. Now, what I wanted to say is that because of the denaturation of the protein, coagulative, Necrosis will occur. Coagulative. Oh, let me drop this. So, because of denaturation of proteins. Denaturation of proteins. Right. As the proteins, they denature, they become less soluble. They become more of the, yes, lionfish is writing, myocardial infarction, yes. We'll be moving towards that also. That, so, coagulative necrosis because of the denaturation of proteins. So, if there is a denaturation of proteins, what will happen? The architecture of the tissue uh, at the starting point will be intact. There will be no change in the structure of the tissue. The tissue will remain same, but the proteins are actually denatured. They have stopped working. So, the architecture of the tissue will be protected. Architecture is protected. Though it is damaged, but it is coagulative kind of. So, architecture is protected or it is preserved. And when actually this is occurring, which are the places where it is occurring? The organs which are actually undergoing this coagulative necrosis. So, the 
organs which are undergoing coagulative necro necrosis is heart, kidney, liver. Right? These are the organs which will undergo coagulative necrosis and in ischemic infraction, if a patient comes with a severe pain, throbbing pain in the chest, that means he has undergone coagulative necrosis. In myocardial infarction, ischemic infraction, it is because of the coagulative necrosis. So, the most common throbbing pain in the heart, the most common symptom is because of the coagulative necrosis. Right? So, architecture is protected and it occurs in the solid tissues, this coagulative necrosis. Let us move further, this liquefactive necrosis. I hope you people have understood coagulative necrosis. The proteins will be denatured, but the ar architecture will be same. And when is it is same or when it is protected or when it is preserved, in the starting only. Starting. In the starting, the architecture is protected, right? So, let us move towards liquefactive necrosis. Liquefactive necrosis. Let's see this in detail. So, what happens in liquefactive necrosis, though I have said that it is quite rare or less common. Rare, I cannot call it actually rare. Let us call it less common as compared to coagulative one, liquefactive necrosis. So, what happens in liquefactive necrosis is there will be increase in the lysosomal permeability. There will be increase in lysosomal permeability. Now, if there will be increase in lysosomal permeability, that means now it will cause damage in the cell. The cells will be damaged. Cells will be damaged. And which kind of damage? As Lionfish wrote, that hydrolase enzymes will be released. So the damage will be hydrolytic damage. Hydrolytic damage. Right. So in liquefactive necrosis, lysosomal permeability is increasing and it is going hydrolytic damage. And this hydrolytic damage is the reason for liquefied tissue it will lead into liquefied tissue right liquefied tissue is happening so whenever we are saying that there is this liquefication of the tissue so what does it mean there we are saying that the arch architecture is protected here the architecture is lost architecture is lost Liquefactive, the term itself is saying the architecture will no longer be same and coagulative, the architecture will be same, right? So, example of liquefactive necrosis, what are the examples? So, in ischemic infraction of brain, ischemic infraction of brain, brain is a soft tissue. Why is it a soft tissue? Because it lacks, lacks collagen. And because of the lack of collagen, what will happen? That the brain fat, whenever there will be this release of the lysosomal enzymes in the environment, it will lead into liquefied tissue. So, because of the no collagen in brain, for the support of the stroma, the brain will be pulpy or the brain is pulpy and already it is pulpy and there if there will be lots of hydrolytic enzymes it will lead into ischemic infraction of brain right it will lead into ischemic infraction of brain so let us, let us write that because of the no collagen already it is soft and because there will be permeability of the lysosomes there will be hydrolytic damage right hydrolytic damage now, we have understood the difference between coagulative and liquefactive uh, necrosis. Now, four special type of necrosis we are going to discuss. Right? So, four special type of necrosis we will be discussing and we will be also seeing 
that these four types of different necrosis they are falling into which category coagulative or necrotic right now sorry coagulative or liquefactive so this is the aim further for the class that what we are going to see so let us write the uh, heading that is the other patterns of necrosis other patterns of necrosis so what all we are going to see in other patterns of necrosis what all things we are going to see we are going to see gangrene we are going to discuss gangrene we are going to discuss fibrinoid necrosis fibrinoid necrosis so let us just number it first gangrene then fibrinoid necrosis then we'll be discussing about fat necrosis fat necrosis and we'll be discussing about caseous necrosis caseous necrosis so this is the further things which we are going to see now so first of all starting with gangrene gangrene right so let us begin with this so whenever if you are talking about gangrene which is the mo most common site of gangrene which is the site where gangrene is most common so it is the lower limb lower limb is the most common site of gangrene what is the characteristic feature of gangrene what occurs in what occurs in gangrene there will be characteristic loss of the blood supply characteristic loss of blood supply what else are the characteristic features of gangrene grayish black discoloration grayish black discoloration of the tissue which is undergoing gangrene grayish black discoloration right so gangrene Uh, most common in lower limb characteristic loss of blood supply and grayish black discoloration so when we are saying about gangrene is there any difference in gangrene also so yes let us talk about dry gangrene and wet gangrene let us move further in gangrene so dry and wet what do we mean by dry gangrene dry gangrene and wet gangrene so if there is nothing mentioned or directly if it is written gangrene so go for dry gangrene normal gangrene and if there is some special features given then it can be wet gangrene so now what are the difference between dry gangrene and wet gangrene let us discuss about dry gangrene and wet one so what happens in dry gangrene is there will be loss of blood supply the first thing loss of blood supply right what else Lo other than loss of blood su supply the architecture is preserved architecture of tissue is preserved so if we are saying architecture is preserved that means it is falling into which category it is falling into coagulative necrosis so loss of blood supply architecture of tissue is preserved and it is falling in the category of coagulative necrosis and what else there will be discoloration gray discoloration this is your dry gangrene now talking about wet gangrene what is it so in gangrene if there is a super if there is a super imposed bacterial infection it will fall in the category of wet gangrene so there will be super imposed bacterial infection super imposed imposed bacterial infection right so if you are saying wet gangrene so architecture is lost architecture is lost and as soon as architecture is lost we are reading it is falling in the category of liquefactive necrosis liquefactive necrosis now in whom does this liquefactive necrosis will occur it will mostly occur in diabetics 
will occur in diabetics it will occur in immune no compressed individual compromised individuals then it will occur in some kind of bacterial infection in some of uh, in some kind of toxins in the body uh, toxins are released so what will happen what will be the actual um, characteristic feature of this wet gangrene how will it be identified so we have seen the things which will happen in the um, wet gangrene that is there will be super infection of some bacteria architecture is lost and but when when what will occur so causes is hydrolysis so we have seen that in liquefactive necrosis the thing that occurs is hydrolysis so hydrolysis will occur it will cause hydrolysis let us write over here it will let us take the another color so hydrolysis it will cause hydrolysis and what else blisters will be seen blisters blisters will be seen right so blisters right so hydrolysis and there will be blisters and this is a typical example of liquefactive necrosis right so remember if blisters and is gangrene then it is liquefactive necrosis fine so this was about gangrene let us move towards another kind that is fibrinoid necrosis let us move further yeah fibrinoid necrosis fibrinoid necrosis now what about this fibrinoid necrosis whenever there will be reaction between fibrin plus immune complexes immune complexes so immune complexes association of antigen antibody if fibrin is reacting with the immune complexes it will be giving rise to a certain kind of damaging to the blood vessels and it will be causing vasculitis so damaging to blood vessels damaging to blood vessels which will be in the end coming up into vasculitis right vasculitis now in vasculitis it will be further because of the poly artery nodosa right so this is the thing and the example is malignant hypertension malignant hypertension so this is fibrinoid necrosis fibrinoid necrosis now if we are doing the microscopic examination of the tissue which is actually undergoing fibrinoid necrosis how will it appear so this is the blood vessel and this is the lumen and this is the outer wall outer wall and this is the lumen so what will happen that the wall though it should be pink but i'm not getting the color so this will be the pink deposits there will be pink deposits pink deposits right so what are these pink deposits that is your fibrin plus immune complexes these pink deposits are the fibrin plus immune complexes so this pink deposit will be actually pink amorphous homogeneous mass this is actually amorphous that is it is lacking any kind of morphology so that is amorphous amorphous homogeneous mass amorphous homogeneous mass in the fibroid in the fibrinoid mass on the vessel wall 
So this is how it will appear on the microscopic examination. This fibrinoid necrosis. This is how it is going to appear. Fibrinoid necrosis. So let us move towards the next type. That is the fat necrosis. Fat necrosis. Fat necrosis. Fat necrosis. So what are the reasons of fat necrosis? We will be seeing that the reasons. Reasons of fat necrosis can be trauma. Or it can be enzymatic. The two reasons can be trauma and enzymatic. So whenever we are talking about tra trauma, so what kind of fat necrosis should come in mind? The example is breast injury. Breast injury. Now, after that, if we are talking about the enzymatic. So for enzymatic, what example should come in your mind? Acute pancreatitis. So what happen in, will happen in acute pancreatitis? Will lipase will be released? Release of lipase? Release of lipase? And if lipase is releasing, definitely it will act on the lipid molecules and there will be formation of fatty acids. Formation of fatty acids. And if there is formation of fatty acid, it will further react with the calcium ions. And when it will react with calcium ion, it will lead into a specific type of chemical reaction that is called as saponification. Saponification. So, what happens in saponification or how will it appear? There will be appearance of White chalky appearance. White chalky appearance. On saponification, the microscopic examination will be like white chalky appearance. So fat necrosis, the reasons can be trauma or enzymatic. For trauma, we have seen breast injury. For enzymatic, it is the acute pancreatitis and lipase will be released. The fatty acid, it will be reacting with the calcium ions and it will be leading into saponification and because of this, there will be the white chalky appearance, right? So, calcium and fatty acids, they will give rise to a specific type of appearance that is the chalky appearance and how will it look like? Let us take another slide and uh, see over there. See, if this is the cell and there will be saponification reaction. What will happen? The cytoplasm, it will accumulate in one side and in the rest of the area, what you will see? You will see some of the chalky appearance. These chalky appearances will be the characteristic feature on microscopic, on microscopic examination. On microscopic examination. What will happen? This is the cytoplasm which is actually, should be actually distributed equally but it will be uh, in the sideline and there will be no appearance of nucleus. No nucleus will be seen. No, no nucleus is seen and if no nucleus see, is seen that means a nucleated, a nucleated fat cells a nucleated fat cells, right? And these things, they are the amorphous basophilic calcium deposits. These are amorphous, amorphous basophilic calcium deposits, right? Amorphous basophilic calcium deposits and these are the actual suggestives of the calcium deposits. Amorphous basophilic calcium deposits are the suggestive, suggestive of calcium 
deposits. So this is how it is going to occur. So we have seen the structure of a fat necrotic cell. How will a normal cell will appear? If this is a normal cell. So what will happen? The nucleus will up appear over here. It will be in the side line. The nucleus will appear over here and this will be whole cytoplasm. So this is how a normal cell, normal cell, this is your nucleus and this is the fat cell in the normal condition. But if it is fat necrotic cell, it will actually appear like this. So here you can write fat necrotic cell, right? So we have talked about three types of special necrosis that is your uh, uh, gangrene, fibrinoid necrosis and fat necrosis and what is the last one remaining if you can remember all the four names which is the last one that is the caseous necrosis. Caseous necrosis right so this caseous necrosis we will be seeing. Now caseous, what does that mean? It is a kind of cheesy appearance. The appearance would be cheesy. Cheesy appearance. Right, on gross appearance it will appear like cheesy. So what this cheesy appearance will actually look like? Okay, it is called as cheesy appearance. The term that is used is cheesy appearance. But what will be the actual appearance? It is like yellowish white debris in the tissue. It is the yellowish white debris in tissue. Now if we are saying this yellowish white debris in the tissue. So why are these yellowish white debris forming? What is the reason of the formation of this yellowish white debris in the tissue? So they are because of mycolic acid. Remember mycolic acid. So mycolic acid, where is it present? It is present in the bacterial cell wall of tuberculosis. It is uh, tuberculosis causing mycobacterium or this is a mycolic acid is a typical characteristic of your TB. Positives, right? So, mycolic acid. So, that is also an example of tuberculosis. This mycolic acid, remember, this cheesy appearance, we are saying that it is cheesy appearance. So, basically, this yellowish white debris is because of the mycolic acid. Now, if we are saying that it is a coagulative one or it is a liquefactive one, so on microscopic examination, if it is undergoing this mic microscopic examination, so microscopic examination, it will actually give two both types of appearance. That is your coagulative, coagulative necrosis appearance and liquefactive as well. Right. So, there will be amorphous or no distinct morphology. There will be no distinct morphology. No distinct morphology or amorphous, right, amorphous. So what else will appear? There will be granular pink structure, granular, granular pink structure. And this is a variant of coagulative necrosis. It is a variant of coagulative. It is a variant of coagulative necrosis. Right. So caseous necrosis. Never forget about mycolic acid. And example, both of the things, in both of the things, mycolic acid or TB, any one thing if you can remember, good enough. You can easily attempt the op questions on caseous necrosis. Right. So, we have completed almost everything in necrosis in this much time. And let us have a very quick revision about the necrosis since starting. Right. 
and even I want the students to comment in the chat box if they have understood the thing and also write what all things you want to read in further classes so I can just make videos on those particular topics right so we are talking about necrosis in today's class now, don't forget to write the topics which you want to study and also write in the chat box that whether you have understood or not so necrosis it's a cell injury it's a part and the cells which are undergoing necrosis they should be part of the living body and it is a kind of sudden death accidental death unlike apoptosis which is a programmed cell death right so let us move that is necro difference between necrosis and apoptosis we have seen necrosis occurs in lethal injury radiations it is unwanted cell death apoptosis is predecided suicide so at the time of the birth only of that particular cell it was decided that how many number of cell cycles it has to undergo so apoptosis and necrosis then uh, in necrosis what happens is series of morphological changes will occur and the cells which will undergo necrosis should be lethally injured and irreversibly injured there is no chance of getting back to the normal irreversibly injured what other things happens the atp level goes down and glucose is converted into lactic acid and when there will be lots of lactic acid in the cell it will be highly damaging to the cells the cells will be highly damaging right then lethal injury of the cell what first thing that we are seeing proteins are denatured so when proteins are denatured cellular structure and functions change there will be disruption of the cellular structure so what all things are actually participating in this thing that structure of the uh, enzymes and pumps and regulatory proteins they will actually get disrupted so there will be lots of morphological changes yeah, I have got some of the suggestions that ma'am please do a video on, on teratology of phalot and immunochemistry. Fine, I'll try to do videos on the suggestive topics and we will try to learn those top topics in a well systematic ma manner. So stay tuned for further classes. I'll definitely solve your queries. Then enzymatic digestion of severely injured cells is occurring. So what enzymes are participating? These are the lysosomal enzymes. If the cells, it is digesting, digesting its own material, it is autolysis. And if the cells material is getting digested by the outer environment, that is because of, because of the macrophages or neutrophils, it is your heterolysis. Right. Let us move. So plasma membrane will also be disrupted and it will lead into inflammation reactions. And there will be dilation of the blood vessels. Leukocytes will come out and they will eat up the necrotic cells. And it will cause lots of inflammation. So the thing that is associated with necrosis is inflammation. Right. So there will be many factors which will be releasing. And there will be formation of fibers. And that is a suggestive of inflammation. Now necrosis it occurs in large number of cells at a particular point of time and apoptosis it occurs in very less number of cells at a particular point of time so necrosis and apoptosis right then necrosis two patterns are there coagulative and liquefactive in coagulative the proteins denaturation will occur and the architecture will be same and it occurs in the myocardial infarction and it occurs in the solid tissues that is heart, kidneys and liver. And most common in myocardial infraction, coagulative necrosis occurs. Then liquefactive, it occurs in the pulpy tissue that is the brain. Because there is already lack of collagen, there is no collagen and hydrolytic enzymes are releasing and they will, liquef they will be liquefying the tissue. Architecture will be lost. So in ischemic infraction of brain, it is a kind of liquefactive necrosis. Then some of the examples, some of the special cases, cases of necrosis we have seen. That is gangrene. It mostly it occurs in the lower limb. The characteristic loss of blood supply, grayish black discoloration will occur. 
then what else dry gangrene and wet gangrene we have seen about in dry gangrene it is coagulative necrosis and there will be loss of blood supply architecture is preserved and gray discoloration is occurring in wet gangrene there will be some super infections of the bacteria architecture is lost so it is liquefactive necrosis and it occurs in diabetics immunocompromised individuals in bacterial infections some um toxins released by the body then because it is a hydrolysis kind of and it is a liquefactive necrosis there will be typical appearance of blisters blisters will appear so the characteristic feature of wet gangrene is blisters right let us move further fibrinoid necrosis it will be seen in the blood vessels and the outer wall and between lumen there will be the deposition of pink deposits these pink deposits are these pink deposits they will be amorphous homogeneous mass and it will be causing vasculitis is causing vasculitis of the blood vessels so how this is occurring because there will be combination of fibrin and immune complexes and they will be giving rise to the pink deposits in between the outer wall and the lumen and the example is malignant hypertension malignant hypertension then fat necrosis is another example of the special patterns of necrosis so reasons of fat necrosis can be trauma and enzymatic for trauma we have seen breast injury for enzymatic the example is pancreatic pancreatitis that is because of the release of lipase fatty acid will react with calcium it will lead into saponification and there will be white chalky appearance see here the white chalky appearance and there will be no nucleus seen in the fat cells so enucleated fat cells are the characteristic features of fat necrosis right amorphous basophilic calcium deposits are seen in fat necrosis fine let us move finally the last thing caseous necrosis cheesy appearance is there this is because of the mycolic acid because of the bacteria causing tb yellowish white debris is seen and it is a coagulative and liquefactive necrosis at the same time and there will be no distinct morphology or it is a amorphous kind of condition so yes we have done necrosis in detail and uh, according to your suggestion in recent times we will be doing our topics which you have said over here hi kushagra mittal hi so you are quite late for the class i am done with the class we have read about necrosis in detail so if you like my video don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if you like and you have gained something don't forget to come back for my another class whenever you are getting the notification please subscribe the channel let's crack neat pg and for getting all the notifications of the upcoming videos by me and the other educators please hit the bell icon so you will be getting all the notification and lastly don't forget to use my referral code that is fb01 for getting an additional 10% discount in the plus subscription hope you have understood the concept and um enjoy study we'll be meeting again in our next class okay thank you thank you very much sam and other students uh, rukaiya johar yes thank you very much so we'll be meeting again come back for the class so bye for now